Hey everyone, welcome to the weekly podcast on the Late Night Show with AJ Stillwell. Today we have a special guest. His name is Tony Bompiani, and today we're going to be hearing his life story. So, uh, hey Tony, thanks for being on the show. Glad to be here, AJ. Um, so the first question that we're going to go through is, um, being a chiropractor, um, what inspired you to be a chiropractor, go through the phase? Well, my dad was a massage therapist. He was blind. And being blind, he lost his job early on. He had six kids. And he learned how to be a massage therapist through the mail. Mm. And when I was young, I used to work for him and work on some kids that used to play football at my high school. Mm -hmm. And I just liked it. So I ended up going on to be a chiropractor. So my dad inspired me to do that. Mm, Nice. And so obviously you growing up in a big family of, what was it, seven? Seven kids, yeah. Um, What was that like? Fun. It was fun. I mean, we were spread out. The, The oldest one was... How old was she? 18 when the youngest one was born, or 19? Mm. She'd already gotten married and had a baby of her own by the time the youngest one was born. So it was spread out over 19 years. But I had, uh, I was a middle boy of five boys. And I had one three years older than me and one three years younger than me. And we hung around and did things together. It was nice. It was nice growing up like that. Mm. And obviously for right now, um, how do you, um, how do you, or do you think you're doing good in business with your chiropractic business? Well, I've been in business over 40 years now, AJ, in the same location. And, um, I raised three children, mm-hmm. as you know. Yep. And they all became successful. My wife and I were be able to help them get through college. I'm on the school board and been involved with kids all my life, coaching and things like that. Mm-hmm. And you know what? mostly happy my wife's mostly happy and yeah i think we're very successful yeah so obviously you told me earlier um have you like does does your um wife do um hunting as a hobby or more as like a job a hobby and it's a job to me aj but it's a hobby um next question like do you, was do you think it was hard starting your own business, like getting um, employees, getting other chiropractors? I don't understand. What do you think? Um, like, like starting your own business, like um, Bonpiani Chiropractic. Right. Do you what think? About it? Do you think it was hard? You know what? I, I was young and I didn't realize it was hard, and um, it wasn't hard because I didn't realize it. I think things become hard when you make them hard in your own mind. Yeah. If you set your goals, if you set your goals and have a plan. Mm-hmm, definitely. Anything. Yeah. Um, and then another topic. When you were growing up, was your household, like, um, always there for you, or were your parents out of the house um, most of the time? No, oh, they were always there. My father, like I, like I said, he's a massage therapist. He had his own place. He built his own building and built, put up his own business together. And he was literally two blocks from our house. And our mother never worked. She never had, well, she worked. She raised seven kids. That's a lot of work. Yeah. But had to hold a job down outside the house. Her job was taking care of us kids and a blind husband. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, so um, obviously, like you said, your dad being blind, was it hard for him to... Uh, like start to go in, like start going, like to make money for your family to bring home. Well, again, I don't think he realized it was hard. He just knew he had to do it, and he worked hard. And you know, in the era, the time that we grew up, everybody knew their neighbors. Everybody was friendly with their neighbors. Yeah. This was right after World War Two, so that was called the baby boomers, mm-hmm. and the reader. It was called the baby boomers because there were a lot of kids being born with the uh, GIs coming, the, the uh, army people come, or the soldiers coming back home. Mm-hmm. And so there were a lot of people our age. And every house had at least four or five kids in it. And sometimes seven or eight or nine, like our family had seven. And 
you could go from house to house, so you were never without adult supervision and a lot of fun. It was it was a, a whole different era back then. Yeah, and another, um, so like obviously, do you um, are you happy where like where you live, or sometimes do you wish like you moved or you were in like a different area, a different um house, a different um property? Now or when I was a kid? Um. You you can go now now and then you can tell us when you were a kid too. Well, I think now relates to when I was a kid because when I grew up when when I grew up, you know, there were seven kids and a mom and a dad, and we were all in a a house with um, three bedrooms. Yep. So the parents had one, and the baby was in the crib in that room usually because we always had a baby and spread out that way. And then the other rooms, one one room uh, was literally eight by ten, and that's where the two girls slept. And then the other bedroom was a larger one where the five boys all slept, or four boys, depending on how many they had, how many children they had at the time. So the house wasn't the biggest thing in the world. So now I'm happy with anything I have. Definitely. And I think as you grow and you get older and you want to be successful, everybody thinks success is money. And success is having a big house, and the bigger the house, the more successful you are. But that's actually the opposite. Because yeah. a, lot of time, a lot of times people get big homes, and then they owe a lot of money, and then there's a lot of stress and strain, and there's not happiness. Yeah, you know definitely. What, success is happiness. Yeah, so, another, yeah, like what you were saying, um, like, would you rather put... Um, money down on a house you can afford and it's perfect for your family or just buy a huge house um put down the money and you're and you're barely living right and i i think that all of us um all of us make the same mistake and if we had to do over again if if i ever gave advice to young people like you and they would listen i would say you know set your sights on what you need to have to raise your children Use your ex- extra money to go do things and plan the future for them. Yeah, so... And, and, you know, then and, and live happy. Yeah, um, what do you think of this whole pandemic coronavirus, like, not seeing many of your family or really anything, like, can't go out? What do you, what do you think the uh, thoughts on it? Well, I mean, in the business I'm in, as you know, I'm a chiropractor and I practice holistic health which means you look within the body Mm -hmm. to try to make the body as healthy as you can and you're ready for anything. So this whole thing of this pandemic is, is just against the grain for me because what we're doing to fight it is exactly opposite of what I believe we need to be on. Mm. And that is we're hiding from it. When I think we need to get it and get the immunity from it, they're waiting for a vaccine or for a cure when I think we need to take care of our immune system and be prepared for it. And they're closing all the businesses down when I think they should protect the people that are at risk and let the younger people do the work that they need to do to keep going. So I think we're, we're hurting it. And to answer your question further, you asked about the family. I've been very blessed because of my feelings. You know, this day and age, having FaceTime, I get to talk to you and the boys but I can't see you. That's probably the worst thing for me because we haven't been able to travel up there. And, um, but that's the worst thing because back here, we're able to see everybody. Yeah. We we can see them because again, we believe that if you get it, you're going to deal with it. So therefore love your loved ones. Would it be a shame to be hiding from this virus, not see and hug your loved ones and then get it and die from the virus and you didn't see or hug your loved ones. Yeah. Um, and then another thing, um, what, like, basically, topics have, in, financially, have you hit a black hole, or are you still, are you still, um, making enough to, like, live off of? You know, and I hate to even talk about that and complain, because, no, I am definitely making enough to live on it. Yeah, yeah. I have a great brother that's working with me, and um, my son, his wife, is helping me out. And, um, no, business-wise, we're very, very blessed. 
my thing is because being on school board, I see what is happening to a lot of other people in business, and this is terrible. Yeah. And it's a terrible thing for um, a government to shut down a business for this reason. It's, it's, this is a terrible thing. And yeah. people are suffering. So for me to complain, I can't complain at all uh, because I'm, I'm very blessed. Yeah, uh, um, yeah, and, like, when you hear someone's getting bullied, especially your grandchildren, obviously, because you live near them, like, what do you think about? What do you... When I hear getting bullied? Yeah. What, what, explain what do you mean, honey? Say, say someone, someone's getting bullied, um, for their, your grand, one of your grandchildren, um, like, like, what are you thinking about at that point? Like, are you thinking, like, we're going to stop this? Or are you just thinking, like, their kids are going to... Well, you know, again, being on school board, and I'm president of my school board, and that comes that comes up in conversation a lot. And my grandchildren are super important to me, as you know. Yeah. I love them more than I love myself. But being on school board, I think about every kid in schools everywhere. And it's a shame that kids bully other kids, but that's been happening forever. From the beginning of time, um, people have to make themselves feel, themselves feel better by hurting another person who they think is weaker than them for some reason. Yes. So, you know, it makes me sad, and I want to stop that, because the bully has more problems than the person being bullied. And you actually, AJ, taught me that. you got to wonder what's going on in that bully's mind because they may have it rough at home and many times that's exactly what's going on Mm. but i think that with a bully you know the the one being bullied has to stand up for himself yeah and they just say you know i'm better than that and i don't believe what you're saying and leave me alone Mm. and then walk away from him yeah so we don't want to keep you here for too much longer but um we have a few more questions for you um the number one thing Basically, um, on my mind was, what do you think, uh, like, when you're, like, what do you think about um, feeling, like, lo- losing, like, when you think about it, what do you feel, like, what's what's your most, um, like, the thing that you're scared of most? What I'm scared of most? Letting, letting people close to me down, I think. I mean... I think everybody's afraid of dying. I mean, that goes without saying. Yeah, definitely. All my life, that's bothered me. But as I get older, that's being lifted from me a lot. But I think the most thing that makes me feel the worst is if I let someone down that I love deeply. Okay. And um, so we're not going to keep you here much um, longer. This is just the last question we're going to close off with in anything What's it? What's advice that you'd give any ten-year-old, eleven-year-old that's watching this video? What would you give them? What advice? Yep. I would say to that ten-year-old, eleven-year-old, be thankful for the blessings you have with your family, with the people that love you, and love them as hard as you can love them. And understand one thing: as you get older, the most important thing in this life is to be happy. And to work toward happiness. Not work toward riches, work toward happiness. So when you go to pick a college, pick one that you think you'll be happiest working at what you want to be. When you go to pick a job later on, pick a job that you're happy doing, and it'll never be a job. It'll be fun. So I think that's the most important advice I can give you is strive to be happy every day. Mm. Put a smile on your face. All right, um, this is Anthony Bompiani. Guys, thanks for watching. Tony, have any last words? Yeah, thank you so much for calling me. I'm very, very pleased to be involved in this podcast, and I hope I uh, brightened your day as at least half as much as you brightened mine. Yep. Well, thanks for coming, Tony. Uh, we're going to end it there. See ya.